the wing loading is the weight of the aircraft divided by the area of the reference wing. Uh, as with the thrust to weight ratio, the term wing loading normally refers to the takeoff wing loading but can also be referred to combat and other flight conditions. Wing loading affects stall speed, climb rate, takeoff and landing distance and turn performance. Few of these parameters will be calculated in this lecture. The wing loading determines the design lift coefficient and impacts drag through its effect upon weighted area and wing coefficient. Wing loading has a strong effect upon size aircraft takeoff gross weight. If the wing loading is reduced, the wing is larger. This may improve performance, but the additional drag and empty weight due to the larger wing will increase takeoff gross weight to perform the mission. The leverage effect of the sizing equations will require a more than proportional weight increase when factors such as drag and empty weight are increased. So wing loading and thrust to weight ratio must be optimized together. Introduction to wing loading estimation. Once the weight estimation for the conceptual aircraft is complete. For each phase of the flight plan, the next step in the design comes is selection of wing loading. The wing loading is defined as the ratio of gross weight of the aircraft to the plane from area of the primary lifting surface, which is represented as W by S. In most design, the primary lifting surface is the main wing and S is the wing plane form area. The wing loading is selected by considering the principal mission objectives of the aircraft such as takeoff and landing, climb and acceleration, range, combat, flight ceiling or glide rate. Wing loading effect on takeoff. The wing loading effects on takeoff through the stall speed can be expressed as Vs which is equals to square root of W by S into 2 by rho CL max where CL max is the maximum 3D lift coefficient for the aircraft. The velocity required for takeoff can be defined as VTO that is equals to 1.2 times of Vs. Now at this point we intend to demonstrate the influence of wing loading on takeoff distance and get the first estimate of takeoff distance. For this we use the data from literature and takeoff parameter which is represented as W by S at TO 1 by CL max W by T at takeoff into 1 by sigma. Here sigma is the ratio of air density at the takeoff site to that of to that of sea level. From the previous formula, now an important fact to be noted here is the thrust to weight ratio that T by W is also a function of altitude. So with this correlation factor the empirical estimation for the takeoff distance that is STO is represented as 20.9 of TOP plus 87 into square root of TOP into T by W. Along with that the lift coefficient can be estimated using CL is equals to CD naught by 2K and the substituting the CL and dynamic uh, pressure the formula for w by s at cruise can be represented as rho v square by 2 into cd naught by 2k and the required parameters like k and cd naught will be calculated in the spreadsheet in the following slides let's begin with our estimation process since cruise is the most important phase so we'll start with cruise start estimation 
so the parameters at the start of the cruising phase so initially we have a cd naught value and we have considered a value of 0 0.02 and the cd naught value varies from 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 a is an aspect ratio this can be considered from previous literature or the aircrafts taken for our literature study and an approximate aspect ratio can be selected now the height is the cruise height cruise altitude which we have considered during our weight estimation and again the mac number cruise mac number follows the same and the weight estimation finalized where the surplus was zero with respect to that the cruise weight has been selected here we have 28,087.83. Then we have a small parameter E, which is also known as Oswald's coefficient, that is approximately equals to 0.2. We have K, where K is equals to 1 by pi AE, and we get a value of 0 0.04. We have a velocity V of 580.7 feet per second, which is the velocity at 35,000 feet. Yeah. And then we have the density at that altitude, usually equals to 0 0.00734. Then we have CL, the coefficient of lift, and coefficient of lift is equal to CD0 by 2K square root, gives a value of 0 0.448. Then we have Q, which is nothing but dynamic pressure, that equals to half rho V square giving us a value of 123.709 pounds per feet cube square. And we have W by S at cruise. So using the formula, we got the, the W by A with W by S at cruise. And using all, we ultimately find the wing area S that equals to 506.24. This wing area will be used for calculations in takeoff and landing parameters. Based on cruise start estimation, for the full cruise range, the weight of aircraft decreases by approximately 30%. So this weight is listed under cruise weight. So we have reduced the weight estimated in cruise start by 30% and we have got our weight at cruise end. At the end of the cruise, the actual wing loading is based on the actual weight and wing area, which is denoted by W by S actual. Now at the lower wing loading, the tendency of the aircraft will be to increase altitude to where the lift again balances the weight. To determine where this occurs, the altitude input under cruise end can be changed. The objective is to find the altitude where W by S ideal is equals to W by S actual. So for this design, we'll get approximately an altitude above 4000 feet. Since the data is not available, we have done our calculation with respect to 4000 feet to match the W by S actual and W by S ideal weight. The important factor that is needed to be considered is whatever altitude we are considering, we need to change the density value with respect to that and calculate our W by S actual and W by S ideal values. Since we know the formulas, so using those formulas, we have got our W by S actual as 38.83 and W by S ideal as 44.37 which can be further reduced with an increase in altitude to determine whether what is the density at that particular altitude and calculate so that the W by S ideal can be brought down to 38.83 or close to that value. For the time being, we can maintain a value of 40,000 plus altitudes and complete our cruise end calculations. Estimating the takeoff estimation for wing loading. Considering a height of 1000, which is a standard height for an aircraft, airport. The CL max as considered before from the literature. And again, the thrust max can be considered from the literature. 
and from weight estimation we have got our weight at takeoff and then uh, area wing area s as estimated in the cruise will be same value will be used and using the weight at takeoff and uh, wing area at cruise will will determine the w by s value we have a sigma whose formula is given and with using the formula we can get our sigma value of 0 0.90 thrust to weight ratio using the values we have got a 0 0.6476 and takeoff parameters as discussed in the formulae we get a value of 50.74 and using this takeoff parameters we'll calculate our takeoff distance that is given as sto and we get a value of 1559.27 feet landing estimation for wing loading we'll consider the same height cl max and thrust value for our landing estimation and we'll take the weight at landing as 18390.07 which is estimated in our weight estimation and wing low wing area can be considered the same value as it was estimated in cruise estimation of 506.24 using these two values of weight weight and landing and uh, wing area will uh, estimate w by s wing loading as 36.32 the same sigma value can be used and based on the obtained results the thrust by weight ratio can be estimated to be 1.033 then we'll have our landing performance which is given by w by s at landing into 1 by cl max into 1 by sigma gives us a value of 25.01 ultimately using this landing performance value to estimate our landing distance which is given by 118 into lp plus 400 gives us a value of 3352.246 feet so that's all for the calculation now in the next upcoming slides i'll drop you with some of the standard values and reference data that can be utilized to do the calculations and consider the assumptions for the respective calculations thank you in this chart maximum lift coefficient and thrust to weight ratio for different aircraft types has been represented based on the mission profile and your type of aircraft the corresponding values can be chosen and can be utilized for the further calculation so in this slide we represent the standard atmospheric data and a uh, plot uh, showing lift by drag max with respect to max number variation at different aspect ratios depending on the l by d max value we can choose the respective aspect ratio since we had our L by D max value something around 14.4, so the appropriate aspect ratio was obtained to be A equals to 6. Finally, we come down to the end of wing loading estimation. I hope the calculations were helpful, and you can use these calculations and the formulae for a particular different type of aircraft that has been considered and for every particular aircraft you may get a different landing and takeoff distance and also a wing area the important three things that we need to consider throughout the calculation phase and i hope you enjoyed it and uh, in the upcoming slides we'll do the further calculations that are required for the estimation of whole aircraft in aircraft design project one and I would like to mention my special thanks to Radha Krishnan, a mate of mine who has helped me throughout the calculation phase. Thank you and have a good day.